Hi all, I'm Lance Eaton, and this is my talk, The Public Dollar, Finding and Flipping the Value of the Commons. It's an idea I've been trying to develop further, and I'm looking for collaborators. So let's get the obvious out of the way, shall we? First, I want to acknowledge that this idea I'm working on has some reasonable limitations. It's not perfect, but nothing is. It can be gamed, everything, including the current system, and it is a material approach. Or it's a pragmatic approach that can help those who, can, who can't see the same way we do to better understand, appreciate, and value the amazing work that open, edu open education represents. So here we go. We inherently know the value of open educational practices. We get what it means when students can freely own their learning materials. We swoon when our open access research is available to scholars around the world, enhancing the disciplinary discourse and sometimes literally saving lives. We breathe more lightly with the freedom that comes with not having to worry about copyright infringement when wanting to appropriately use others' materials. Those experiences are powerful, impactful, and in many ways, priceless. Ultimately, they are qualitative, rooted in the individual experiences that are harder to translate or even get people to understand at the societal level. We need a clearer mechanism for translating the power of open and communal goods in education in order to penetrate society's imagination about how transformative this movement is. Short of a new system of copyright that systematically reconfigures private and public goods, we're left with few options. The open access and education movements have done much in the past 20 years, but are still subject to complicated open washing schemes by publishers. A great example of this is Nature's recent decision to charge over $11,000 in author processing charges for an open access article. When countries seek nationwide policies, publishers introduce geo-blocking, where research is available in one country, but five miles away across an imaginary borderline, it is no longer available. Getting national legislation passed in the US by a hostile Congress that can't seem to even take care of its citizens in the midst of a global pandemic feels futile. And don't get me started on inclusive access publisher deals at institutions. What we need is an alternative way to crisply articulate the exponential value of open research and educational resources. What we need is a public dollar, a construct that succinctly captures the value of the commons. We know that educational materials and research literature have skyrocketed in prices over the past 40 years, well beyond rates of inflation. These prices have little to do with the actual cost of the production and everything to do with the inelastic nature of these goods. Beholden to instructors' requirements, students cannot trade out textbook A for textbook B, and increasingly they cannot even access previous editions as a cheaper alternative. Scholars too need access to research literature. They cannot trade out one finding for another. Publishers know this and work to squeeze out as much profit from this tension. By treating knowledge as a private good, even though much of it is supported directly and indirectly by state and federal tax dollars, the market has revealed not only the value of such knowledge, but over the course of time, how that cost should continue to grow. That is, we not only have the current rate of what tax-produced knowledge should cost, but also at what rate the cost should increase. What if we use that model to articulate just how invaluable such materials are when they are placed where they belong, in the public commons? Some of this is already being done. Many institutions and organizations like Spark track money saved by students through OER projects. But what about creating a structure with actual formulas that provide a clear sense of what are the societal savings when educational materials and research become open? Enough so that at any given time, every scholar, journal, academic society, and institution can clearly speak to their quantitative contributions to the public good. Let's consider an example. This article, Cleavage of Structured Proteins, was published in Nature in 1970 by Lamely, who worked at a public university. It is one of the most cited journal articles in history. And to no surprise, it is still locked behind a paywall 50 years later. If I just wanted to read this article within 48 hours, I need to pay $9. If I actually wanted my own copy, $32. 
might do a basic calculation that each one of these citations represents a download of a freely available article. That's a fairer measure than just access since owning and the ability to return throughout one's research is inherently more valuable than paying money for temporary access. Thus, were this an open access article, it would be valued at $8.6 million. But it doesn't stop there. Citations are largely used in discourse among scholars and the like. But what about other entities who might access and benefit from the research, but have never had the resources to do so? What about people reading research to help them in their work at hospitals, law firms, NGOs, and industry? And let us not ignore those who just seek to learn. These two would also represent $32 per download, which means the full value of this article would include those downloads as well after adjusting for the citations. Unfortunately, we don't know that number for this article, but we know that the download to citation ratio is skewed towards downloads. So even if we're being generous with a 1.5 to 1 ratio of downloads to citations, we find that number at just nearly $13 million. Thus, the single article represents $21 million of public good. But that $32 is not a static number. It is a number that we can track over the past 50 years to understand its rate of increase and adjust the price accordingly over the years based upon the projection of value established by the market. Therefore, whenever new downloads are happening of articles that are decades old, we are sure to be capturing their appropriate value. The same mechanism can work for open educational resources. Let the market lead the way in how to determine public value, how we create a representative public dollar. If, and I know that's a big if, the open community can find a way of creating the right mechanisms and calculations, we will be able to capture and articulate this value, which is inherent to us, but often intangible to others. Now it's easier said than done, but I think it's a project worth pursuing to better articulate just how important the work is that we all do in the realm of open education and research. Thank you very much.